Shalom, my beloved and Hamashiach, your brother Elder T. Haman the Hebrew, uh, signing in for the body of Christ, you know, nation of Yasharala, tribe of Judah, 12 tribes of the 12 tribes and worldwide. Um, I don't even know where to begin with. I uh, just felt that I needed to um, give a word of encouragement and just to kind of report to you all real time as your brother's out in the field, as I'm sure many of you are out in the field. And I want to title this Boasting in the Higher. So I'm going to boast in the Most High. Uh, yesterday, for the last last couple, just the last couple of days, or just specifically yesterday, I was feeling heaviness, and really a couple of days. And the reason I was feeling this heaviness is because I knew that I had to. What do I do with this thing? Hopefully, I brought this. I knew that I was going to have to go. I must. Have, I must have left it in inside. I wanted to show you all something here. I knew that I was uh, going to have to go to what you call, I guess, in this system's court, right? I had got these two, these two tickets, and these tickets were based on, you know, the business that I had. The business, again, this happened at the end of 2015. So all of the 2015, December 2015, really, so it really happened. Like at the, the end of November to December, I had to make a decision like, what am I going to do? And I had to just get out and it was like, you know, still waiting and I mean, bills were piling up and, you know, the place that I was, I was leasing was nearly, you know, three, just about three grand a month or going up to three grand a month. And that's the place where we had our ministry at as, as far as the, the building itself. And um, also, it, it doubled down as, you know, we ran our business out of it as well. And so, it was a really nice, you know, set apart setup that the Most High had given into my hand. And I like to believe it's for time in the season. But long story short, I had to make the decision after nearly three and a half years um, to, you know, it just, it wasn't working the way that, Maybe I thought that it would or that I wanted it to the way that I would like to have have it done. And as I sit back and I reflect on it, you know, some of those things that, you know, I still experience grief from it, grieving. But at the same time, it's a big, a big release, too, because there was a lot of pressure on me to perform. And when I say that the grief is because just it's nothing like having family owned business where yourself your family and those around you are able to work together and anyone that knows me personally especially my family and those who you know are in close contact with me knows that I always said that I wanted our business to be a blessing so that way we can bless others and be self-sufficient so to where they wouldn't have to you know work in this system because why for one we weren't doing any business on the sabbath uh, so this is called boasting in the higher and on the holy days we were shutting down and we did everything in the fear of the most high okay and so you know a lot of the times and and it was it was auto sales okay we had, had a used auto sales dealership and a lot of times, you know, in that particular business, it's, you know, it's straight savvy and cutthroat. You know, the people, the, the dealers in it, they get up to a point to where they get, I guess, big and money's coming in. And really, brothers and sisters, money, it seems to, it changes people, okay? Those who aren't ma mature to handle it. Money seems to, you know, change people. And do we need money to operate in to get the things that we need in today's time and date? Yes, that absolutely. But to go about it, we're not to 
to serve money. You understand? And what I'm saying is that we cannot serve the Most High in Mammon. And so we have to put our trust in the Most High. So I believe, and not only do I believe, I know, because the Father is showing me that His hand was with me. So I think about the times, and I do reflect on that, like, you know, the sanctuary that we had is, uh, you know, it was able to seat, I would say comfortably, maybe 30, maybe 30 people. And at, you know, at one point, because when my son, when uh, I married him and, you know, him and his wife and put my blessings upon their marriage, there was like nearly, I think, 60 people. I mean, we were jam-packed in there, but we had 60 people, and that was just family and, you know, really, really close friends, and that was there, okay? So anyhow, let me move on. So, the business. December 2015, going into 2000, and so that, that December I went in and I had to go and humble myself down. After months of going through months, like I said, in, 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 two, in 2015, so somewhere around, uh, maybe it was August, September, October, October, November, December, so August, September, September October, November, December, September, October, November, and December. Okay, and you can even add August in there. There's some very, very tough months, okay? And, you know, anything with the business, you have ups and downs. You have to be able to to ride the wave and know how to manage and to prepare. Well, brothers and sisters, the way that I you know, ran my business, I put my trust in the most high. And, you know, I operated it on faith, truly. And I, I like to think, not that I just like to think, I know that I gave people good deals and you know when you're dealing with with vehicles sometimes you know vehicles have it's a mechanical thing so i would tell people you know everything honestly up front and then sometimes you know when you're dealing with a vehicle you could have an issue two months three months four months and you know sometimes those things that have uh, someone that has a false expectation of a vehicle, you know, sometimes they could be frustrated or upset or whatever the case. So we didn't have too many people who were upset or frustrated with us, but there was a, a couple occasions, a couple incidents where we did, and I spoke to the people. Again, always answered my phone, answered the call. We just, you know, do things. You can tell when someone is honorable and not trying to get over, but... When you're in sales anyway, people automatically think that, you know, you're getting over on them. You got it for so much and you're making, you know, you're just getting over on them. You're making the boatload. They didn't understand it was a business, right? So the point that I'm making here is that I began to, you know, sell cars literally almost sometimes for what I necessarily pay for them. And I understand I have an expense to pay for the place where I was at pay for the inventory, pay for the lights and everything to run the business. On top of that, need to make enough money so that where I'm able to keep a roof over my head and take care of my family, mind you. And I have a decent-sized family. So as the, the champion of my household, I was always a hard worker and stand up on ends, days in, working. And, uh, you know, not to go too much into this thing about uh, auto sales because thinking about that that really kept a lot of my time you know dealing with that trying to manage the business and then you have taxes and you have all these particular things well towards the end in those last few months i began to sell cars i had to sell the cars to just get rid of them because my creditors and that's one thing off of borrowed money i tried to build the business up and get more inventory to bring more people in or get more expensive inventory and because of those things, having someone over you, you know, borrowing a lender, I mean, the borrower is indebted to the lender. So the lender began to put pressure on me, too, and all this pressure so is just trickling down, and it seemed like everyone wanted a piece of, of me, okay? And so I was crying to the most high, even in that, and it become very painful and grievous, but I, every day I can tell you the most high, even through all of it. The Most High was my pride and joy. I thanked the Most High. 
because I had enough faith and enough sense based on the, the, the blessing that the Father had, was showing me to get up and put my faith in the Most High and get out of the place where I was at because sometimes people, the scripture says there's jobs that cause people to sin. And the prior job, these people were straight. In corporate America, cutthroat, vicious, was all about making money, okay? They would burn their customers, okay, and dog them out, okay? And then on the flip side of that, they was dogging their employees out. And it all became about the dollar. And so, like the, the scripture says, from the wicked goes forth the wickedness. So all this stuff is going on and on, right? So, anyhow, after three and a half years, the father, everything happens, you know, because nothing happens by coincidence. The father said, you know what? It's time to, he moves me in a different direction, the way he feels necessary. And it was painful because I, I couldn't imagine and, and fathom the fact that after three and a half years and, you know, seeing, and it was, you know, believe me, brothers and sisters, it was, it was an uphill battle from the very beginning. But the Most High kept us in it, kept me and my family, gave us inner peace, provided for us, kept a roof over our head, paid, paid for the building, and tithes was coming in to support the ministry and to... It, it, it was awesome, okay? And it is awesome just to have that experience. Not only that, to see my young ones grow up with me in their lives for that time to, to get that, how do you say it, to have that that connection, right? And that's the only way that, that comes to mind right now. But to have that closeness, that bond, that's what I was looking for. For my little ones to grow up and see them play and, you know, my wife and my eldest son and, you know, my young not my youngest daughter, but my younger daughter, she was going to school and, to, you know, it was them for a moment for the family to be, first of all, all of us humble and thankful to the Father, but proud to the point, thank you most high that, you know, we have a heart for the family, we have a hard-working father. And on top of that, a minister, a servant of the most high, and I would share with, with you know, for the most part, whoever would come in through, to our doors and tell them that the Most High gave it to us. And a lot of times, brothers and sisters, I spoke to our very own people. They would come in and, you know, some of them, some of the, some of our Israelite brothers and sisters was like, man, it's good to see, you know, a brother being self-sufficient. And, and, you know, not only that, you know, sometimes Ishakar writes and I would tell them and, you know, even had, you know, just other nations outside of Israel who believed in Christ and I would I would converse I would share you know the most high and boast in him that he had, the most high high had given it to me so anyhow through that time it really began to get very very heavy and so like I said the most high began to move me and those particular months were very very hard even up until the very last moment to where I had to send out my resume and go back into corporate America and thinking about that I'm like, man, I'm going to have to humble myself. And the father, I say, well, I tell you what, he blessed me. He landed me at a place to where, you know, I was managing. I was a, a canvas manager of, of this company, a small company, independent. So I was right under, you know, the owner or the owner group. And, uh, you know, I went right in and told him and sat down and had three meetings with this person and said, look, I have a business and the business is closing down. They were like, well, how do I know that you're going to, you know, once things get going good for you, you're not going to just up and leave me and go back to your business. And I said, look, the way we're so deep into it, I need to I need to, to, to begin to work. And if I commit to something, you know, I'll let you know in advance. I'm not the type of person to just to burn bridges. OK. And so I made it very clear when I went into this job from the very second that the Sabbath, I don't work on the most high, on the Sabbath, which is what we know is Saturday. And, uh, you know, I know that being a canvas manager and being in sales and running, you know, my department and building it up, you want people to go out on the weekend. And that's just not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to be about that. And so they were OK with that. And then, you know, because they knew that I knew what I was talking about. I showed them numbers. We talked numbers and we negotiated and they gave me what I like to think is, you know, a very generous salary. I told them, look, for me. To do this position off the back, and I'll put it out there too, brothers and sisters, I'm going to need a salary of 
a thousand a week. Okay, you put a thousand a week times fifty-two. That's fifty-two thousand a year. Plus, I'm going to need bonuses off of the sales that I generate, and overrides, all this particular thing. So that you know, it was enough to take care of because the family that I have, and not to not to mention the place where I'm living, it, it costs. It costs. Okay, and so there was a certain number that I knew that. I wasn't going to do it less than that. And on top of that, you know, there was times coming having my own business, I've made money. I've sat down and, and took in, you know, 20, 30,000, 40,000 in cash in a day, sometime in the week. And sometimes, you know, went a month and a half without <laughs> barely taking anything in. So anyhow, that's just how it is. And business is feast of famine. So in this negotiating, I made it very clear. So I let the person know that. Okay. So now, six months into this, six, seven months into it, again, as you all know who's been following and linked in with us to the Spirit and those who know me personally, this person, the ownership of this company said, look, we're not going to keep paying this guy. I build them up. They begin to make, you know, millions of dollars. And they're like, man, these overrides, man, we, what are we paying this guy all this money for? Well, we're paying him for his salary, <laughs> right? And there was no contract to say. It was just... It was basically like, I guess, a work for hire. You're going to give me this. And so I knew that going in. And I told the person, listen, when money comes in, I've seen these roots. As soon as the money comes in, people change. Money changes people, right? So the people got their money. Sure enough. And one thing that you can count on, man's going to do what man's going to do. The most high is always the same. He does not change, right? So if, if it, you can count on a chicken to, to be a chicken or what do you call it? Rooster to crow, right? You can count on that, all right? Hold on one second, brothers and sisters. Hold on one second. Hey, Terrain. I'm I'm doing I'm doing the weekly exhortation. How, how you doing? I got you on speakerphone. Uh, there's okay. I thought you something there. Oh, is there something wrong? No, I was just telling you. Chalmers said he said anybody that was good if I'm higher good, they need, he needs to work on Saturday. Oh, okay. I got you. Okay, no problem, Terrain. All righty. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. So, you know, the bottom line is that. You know, here it goes that, you know, I put it down, did what I said I was going to do the numbers, and now they're like, you know, they're reneging. And so, again, a rooster you can count on the crow, man's going to do what man does. So people can say all these things, and at the beginning they said all these things, yeah, you know, but I knew going into it, even with the business, everything that I go into, that the Most High has my best interest. He knows, he can see into the hearts of people. As the scripture says, he tries the reign of, you know, he, as it says, he, he tries the heart and, 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 and he discovers the reins of man, the, the inward parts of him. Okay. So the most high is searching. He, he searches the heart and try, or, and I'm paraphrasing. Okay. And tries the reins of man to see what it is. So nonetheless, they, I end up getting this thing set up. Other people came came in, and of course, what do what do companies do? They always want to cut overhead, and I guess that's just the nature of the business in this world that we live in. It's crooked, it's corrupt, and uh, again, here it is. You know, the father still sustained me though. So even in that that juncture, I had enough and did enough work and 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 tried to manage what the father's given me to the point to where it sustained me to to even right here to so called in. Uh, you know, so-called February 7th, 2017, as I'm talking to you all. So, you know, where do I go from here? Now, that happened. Meanwhile, all this time while I'm working at this particular place, running this stuff, and it's very stressful and difficult, dealing with people, you know, who are in the world and of the world, and, you know, you being set apart. As soon as I come in, they notice that, man, you know, this person's not cursing. I tell them I'm a minister, I'm a pastor. OK, tell them that I keep the Sabbath and they just have questions. So it just don't sit right with them. You, you understand? And they're celebrating worldly things and I don't want anything to do with it. They're having company <laughs> gatherings on the so-called holidays. And I'm like, you know, I appreciate the invitation, but I'm going to sit this one out because I don't do anything that the world does, because that's not of the most high. I follow what the God of the Bible says. All right. And I let all these things be known and and, and, and decency and order as well. OK. Everything done in uh, decency and order and not trying to offend, but just telling the truth. And so, you know, of course, it's going to offend people. 
And so just, you know, we even had our conversations. And with these conversations, I, you know, I'm no pushover. I know what I'm supposed to do. Just let me do my job. And I can't have someone micromanaging me. And anytime you're working for people, it's just like, man, it's a mess. It really is. So anyhow, the particular business, there's some things that, I mean, these people took my inventory, came after everything, still trying to have me in, in debt to this very day. And so I'm praying to the most high of times it's hard to get out of bed, have the ministry going, watching over the brothers and sisters, and, you know, being faithful and transparent. My own walk, seeing their walk, and all these things, it begin to be grievous and very, very heavy. And it, and, it, and it does. I was thinking this week that, you know, about dead congregations. Think about that. If someone that is, uh, you know, feeding the flock of the most high and as a shepherd, you know, take take oversight of it, not for filthy lucre, not for money's sake and, you know, uh, to be seen, but to do what the Most High says to do, all right? And so all of this stuff that I'm, I'm thinking about is up in here and now for this last day, it's very, very heavy. And so I've seen that in this time, the Most High has allowed me to be able to, you know, the last six months, if you will, okay, six or seven months do so much ministry and maybe reach people at a point to where it's so vast, bigger than what I thought, or more people that I even reached when I had the business or whatever the case is, because we are all, we all belong to the most highs, right? Whether we be vessels to honor and holy and set apart, or vessels to dishonor and being destroyed by the hand of the most high, Okay. And so these are the things that I think on. So, and there's a lot, brothers and sisters, you know, I try to try to be, I'm just sharing with you in, in my mind. And uh, for those who would be encouraged and inspired by it. But this is about boasting in the higher. And uh, so I'm sitting back the other day. I'm working on this new track. Most high willing, if it be the Father's will, that it'll be up by the Shabbat. And so I, when I'm sitting back reflecting, I'm like, you know what? I thought about this last night and the other night. Man, it seems like when you... And one thing, if if you don't know this, I was a person and a, a man of the faith that asked for great faith for some time ago. So if you ask for great faith, that means you're going to be tried, brothers and sisters. So through it all, you know, I think about the time back in 2000 and so-called 2010, I lost my so-called house. I mentioned that to people in past videos. Um, you know, in 2005, we bought the house at the end of 2005, 2006, and the so-called inflated, uh, high inflation of the, you call it the housing bubble, and they just, you know, ripping people left and right. So everything's a learning curve, but through all of that, brothers and sisters, holding on to the most high, okay, and still cleaving to him to this very day, seeing some people come and go, some people frequent, now maybe not in touch, they're out, you know, trying to find their way. And through all of that, brothers and sisters, I can't have any bitterness or anything that would taint or corrupt my soul. I must keep myself pure, right? But it hurts when you see your brothers and sisters that you've told, and but they have to find their way too, so I understand. But yet, everything comes down to a choice. I mean, think about it. It comes down to a choice. Whether you give in to the pressure or you just be like, I thought about like how Abraham got thrown into the fire when Nimrod... He came and took Abraham and threw him in the, in the fire. Like uh, Daniel, Meshach, and Bendigo. Like they were thrown in the fire. Right? Nebuchadnezzar had them thrown in the fire. So they had to have faith. And so even to this point, that's what I say to myself. I'm going through all these things, but I must keep the faith. And sometimes it's discouraging. And it's, it's it hurts. It really does as a shepherd. As, an, as a doer of the word. Someone that, as a watchman. The watchman on the wall, crying out aloud, lifting your voice up like a trump, keeping yourself pure when you see everything around you, people compromising, some people just, you know, going through all, false brethren, uh, people sowing discord, you know, uh, you know, carn carnality, you know, people saying that they're righteous, all the confusion that's being, being perpetrated out there, people purposely deceiving people, people going about being deceived and deceiving others, believing a lie and loving not the truth. So through all of that, I must hold fast to it. And I cherish the relationships 
and the memories that I've, you know, the relationships that I built in the spirit with those of like mind and like faith. And I thank the Most High for the Holy Spirit. I thank Yeshua for sending the Holy Spirit down to us to nourish that. I thank the Most High for my family. And like I said, keeping myself in line with the word of the Most High. So to sum this all up, brothers and sisters, having said all that, and I know this is, this is, uh, I guess, unorthodox, if you will, because it's not, I'm here, I'm there, I'm telling the pieces of, uh, I'm telling the pieces of, you know, of my life as it comes to my, to my memory. So the business dissipated and all this debt here, I'm giving people deals and people, you know, to them, you know, some people really, really do appreciate it. And they said, man, I recognize that this vehicle that you're selling to me is worth $12,000, okay, and you just sold it to me for $8,000, $7,500, $7,000 sometimes, just depending on where I, where I got it at, because you have a retail, and as a, as dealers, you, you know, you market somewhere in there. Well, I was selling the vehicles that I had, and that was, I guess, my niche to try to get it at private party, what they would sell it at. So people would come to a place, a dealer, and they're seeing deals and, you know, not, not, not all of them. Some of them I did sell at, at retail for what they were, and some of them you pay more, some you pay less. I mean, it's just the nature of the business, all right? So anyhow, towards the last, I mean, it got so heavy on me where, again, the borrower is a servant to the lender. Now the lender's on my helmet. You know, I'm juggling at one point, you know, 35 cars, and that may not seem like a lot to someone, 30, 35 cars. And I'm like, wow, you know, a small percentage of it that I own outright, and I'm trying to make all these payments. I'm using the credit line to buy cars, and I'm using the money that I have, and all the stuff to just try to manage this business, pay taxes, just do everything. And at the same time, those who are around me, to give them, to reward them to work as well. And just saying, the Most High is going to see us through this. We're just going through something. And by faith, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, all the holy the holy feasts were able, the Most High always came through, were able to eat big, you know, spiritually first and then physically to celebrate. And the Most High gave us rest. But it spent, I spent a lot of my time, and my family too, were, you know, crying out to the Most High heavily, brothers and sisters. And... I'm the type of person that has a big heart to want to help people. And if there are people who are doing bad or whatever the case is and need help, you won't even have to ask me for it. If I see it and I, I know it, I'm going to, you know, extend, extend the helping arm and to give. And that's what we're supposed to do, brothers and sisters. Enoch told his sons to, to share with the poor. Now here it is, you know, I myself, what the world may call poor or whatever the case is, but I'm rich in faith. And and not only that, I don't want to make it seem like I'm out on, on the streets or whatever the case is. But by faith right now, here it is. I don't have a necessary where, where my business where it's been lucrative to where I'm bringing in money in on a regular. You, you understand? And so it is tough and it's difficult at times. And I'm, I'm actively seeking employment to, to some extent to where I can make enough, make enough to sustain what I need. And here's my here's my prayer. Father, don't give me so much to where I begin to boast in myself and say and forget about the most high and say, I done this and forget about the most high. And Father, don't let me become so impoverished to where I resort to something drastic and out of desperation, dishonor him and bring shame upon myself. So I just want to be and I've learned through all of this, brothers and sisters, through the highs and lows, how to be evenly balanced, how to abound and and be grateful with much and with little okay and still have that perfect peace so again this is about boasting in the most high and you shine okay boasting in the high so here it goes this time goes by so five six seven months ago so some of the last cars that i sold i wasn't able to make the transfer for the registration because i'm giving these people deals paying the taxes for their car i mean people were literally trying to take advantage right paying the taxes on the car Paying their registration fees. When you go to buy a car from a dealer, you are required to do that. And I'm not saying that every single person that I paid it, but for the most part, a lot of a lot of the times I did. Okay, because it was just about moving the cars. I wasn't trying to 
get rich. You you hear what I'm saying? Like some people have a minimum to where they're off of a car, and this just depends what level of car they have. Well, I got to make four thousand off of a car. I got to make you know. This is what some people do. There's a time where I would make five hundred dollars off a car, a couple thousand, you know. Sometimes nothing at all. A hundred, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, and it's like, well, that's not worth it, right? So anyhow, towards the end, like I said, it began to get really, really intense and very, very vigorous and, and strenuous. Uh, it was a hard toil. So these particular, uh, I guess, uh, you know, a couple of people, and, and rightfully so, they're like, where's their registration at? Well, brothers, I didn't have the money to make the transfer, but when you go into business as a dealer, you have what you call a bonds, right? So I had a $50,000 bonds. Where so if anything like if a, the business does topple, which this business end up going down, okay, and it's not by coincidence, brothers and sisters. Please understand that. All right, if it, if it was of the world, the world would be helping you. Everybody would be supporting you. And listen, it, it was an uphill battle. I thank the Most High. I really do for those who have come to show the support for the business. And that's a whole nother situation. People would truly be hating. They really do. But for those who have mourned with me for the loss of our business, okay, and those. Who have blessed us i bless you okay i pray the most high bless you and those who said the most high put a double blessing on you i i thank you that's in my it's forever burnt in my memory all right and so i just had that thought right there but i mean it's true right brothers and sisters and so here we go um this time later you know people coming back the, the, some of the things that with the cars they come and take some of the cars that I hadn't sold. And I was trying to like hold out for me. Like, wait a minute, before you take these cars, let me hold them and sell them. Something's going to just break or give. But mind you, like I said, I end up going back and in, going back into corporate America because, you know, I couldn't wait another another day. I had to get to work to bring some money and to pay our bills, bring tithes in and to just, you know, stop the bleeding, brothers and sisters, if you will, the financial bleeding. So the Most High blessed me with that job for that time in the season. And it wasn't man. Man did what man would do. They would use you up. They'll use your resources, use your likeness, use your personality, use everything and drain you and leave you dry and empty. Remember that, brothers and sisters. You heard it here. Okay? So me knowing all these things, I know what man's going to do. So I know what the society that we're living in. So long story short, six months to a year later, I get... This thing from the state of California, you know, the DMV investigators saying that you didn't pay a transfer of this car right here. Now, these people, I tell them, well, I lost my business. The business have gone down I'm in debt here and don't have the finances to, to do it. And so isn't that what a bond for? So these people end up giving me a ticket. Right. And, and th now, mind you, there are some people who really do criminal activity like they're I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. A straight cut though the auto business there's some straight vicious sinister people that's all about making money and you know they're burning people left and right I'm not saying everyone's like that but it is a it is pretty savvy right so you know they're thinking the same the investigators are thinking the same thing about me like I was trying to get over on people and just didn't pay like I collected something from these people and didn't give the state any money I'm like I've never collected a from these particular ones i never collected anything from these particular people that you've given the ticket to me on and uh, so anyhow i explain it and and they say well look go transfer this and you know and one of them i was able to you know get the finances to do and transferred it and uh you know they gave me the ticket i had to go to court for it and when i go to court they're like man this could be a misdemeanor so I'm like, wait a minute, you guys are treating me as if I'm a, crim a criminal, as if I've done something with a criminal intent, and that's not the case. I've lost my business. I had insurance. I had a bonds. Why don't you go after the bonds and have them pay for it? Because isn't that what I paid the thousands of dollars to get that $50,000 bonds? So anyhow, long story short, brothers and sisters, boasting in the most high. This has been weighing on me. Well, today was the day to go to court for these two tickets that I got, and each one of them were like $1,065 apiece. Mind you, financially, it's tough for me right now. And so I don't have the money to pay for this. I'm giving people deals. And you mean to tell me something where I, I bought a car and, and, and based on what I bought it for, I sold it just so I can pay off the lender. And now all of a sudden I got, I'm getting penalized 
for, for, for losing my business trying to provide for my family? Now, something don't seem right here, right? <laughs> it's like the, the story goes on and on. So I'm praying to the Most High. I'm thinking about the Most High, thinking about His goodness and His great kindness and generosity. And, uh, you know, last night and, you know, the night before. So since Sunday, I've been, you know, Sunday morning about 6 a.m., I began to work on this new track. And it's really nice. I, I really like it. I pray that the Most High blesses me with words and to stir up the gift of the Holy Spirit within me. So that way I can be used as a vessel and just bring forth what the Spirit deposits into me. So that you all may be inspired and that you may receive an increase and a deposit from the Holy Spirit as well. So, man, I stopped making the music and all this pressure's on me. I'm thinking about, I'm reflecting back on the walk, reflecting back again from losing the house back in 2010 is when I lost, we, you know, stepped away from that. And like, you know, even when I'm thinking of that, I'm like the most high had us though. I mean, you, you, you went to losing the house, which is painful. I mean, anyone that experienced losing the house that, because that's a house for your family and you, the way that you think, and the Bible says that our ways are not the most highest ways. And our thoughts are not the most highest thoughts. His thoughts and his ways are higher than ours. So I have to say, and I did say, and I do say, whatever that's going to befall me, I'm ready to accept it. I'm cleaving to you, Most High, the same way that Abraham in the fire. I'm going through, you know, this kind of fire here in this earth and, and going through the storm, right? Through the persecution, going through the affliction. And, uh... So I'm thinking of that, thinking about my walk, thinking about the world in general, the people that we've witnessed to, gone out and prophesied to, that we need to, more people we need to reach. And so somewhere in there, I just, man, you know what? I can't even make the music right now. My mind ain't even there. I'm, I'm heavy right now. I have a heavy a spirit of heaviness on me. Very sad. And, um, you know, my brother in the faith, bless his soul. Brother DJ Holy Ghost, okay, and his his name is uh, Yosef as well, but uh, the the brother sends me a text, and you know he's been texting me, and I've known this brother for some time, and before I even come into the truth of knowing that I was an Israelite, or right around that time of knowing that I was an Israelite, my brother, this is when I was so-called quote unquote, or I guess you call a Christian rapper, if you will, or Christian. Um, my brother was keeping the Sabbath, and that's a marker for me, too. And I'm like, wow, the Most High made our lives cross paths. So bless his soul, Brother DJ Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, I talked to my brother about the truth, and Most High willing, he going to do, like, you know how the DJs be doing spins? He'll do a truth spin. I've been talking to the brother about that, and we want to get together with our brothers and the truth as the Most High builds us up and builds not just us, but uses us. And provides the mean as he see fit in the time and the season, then we'll make that happen. Have the truth artists together and put some nice mixes together and get those out to the brothers and sisters too. So anyhow, the brother, my brother in the faith, your brother, uh, our brother, DJ Holy Ghost, sends me this video, uh, and these people are talking about Ahia, right? Just to add to it, right? And they're saying that Ahia is not. It just simply means will be and. You know, the, the person who's teaching this and, you know, having this lesson, you know, they're coming in the spirit of humility. I must say that. And they said it's not to tear anyone down. And, you know, if someone wants to, they, they've stated that clearly. That was their disclaimer. So, you know, give them kudos for that. If you want to call on a higher, this is what this person is saying. Okay. It, you know, it's not about your salvation. It's not a salvation issue. Okay. You just call on the name that you believe is the name of the Most High, then, but this person is just saying that it just means the will be. And again, I know that that I've gone through that, you know, myself in, in my quest of searching for the Most High. And I would say around 2000 and, 2000 and, I think in 2011, I'm going to say, and that's when I began to really start proclaiming it. When I say proclaim it, that means you're going out and you're letting it be known publicly. Now, brothers and sisters, in this world, when you're blasting out the truth and standing on the truth of the Most High, you're growing in boldness and faith. And when I say boldness, not an arrogancy, but confidently, when you know that you know, you're proclaiming the truth. And the devil, he don't like that. So anyhow, not to 
digress and go go off of what I'm talking about. You know, my brother was feeling really heavy, and said so. He sent me those, sent me some videos, and I looked at the videos. And I said, brother, stay strong, brother. I mean, there's a lot of people. Even before people, before this thing began, I think it was around. It probably was right around 2011 or 2012. Okay, be, be, but prior to that, I was, you know, 2009. You know, looking at the name of the Most High High, and somewhere around it when, when uh, you know. Brother Elder Ricard, then, you know, begin to proclaim it as well. So first there's a time when we have it amongst ourselves, and then we go out and we proclaim it, brothers and sisters, with boldness and humility and be the light, be the salt of the earth. Okay, and not tearing and, and you know, not trying to, uh, uh, how do you say it? We're not trying to just tear someone down and be a stumbling block for someone. So that I can understand that if someone's calling on other particular names, whatever the case is, Try them by the fruits. You'll know them by the fruits, brothers and sisters. Know them. Look at a person. Let them talk. If they got arrogancy, pride in them, you know, corrupt communication, and we all can grow. But these are indications. These are people, some people even that may be calling on the most higher, higher, and, you know, you hear some, some corrupt communication come out their mouth, and you're like, man, that boom, the red flag shit. We are holy and set apart. We're not to be doing those things, brothers and sisters. We should prayfully that the Holy Spirit convicts their heart. All right? So, anyhow, let me get back on point. So, I'm watching this video, and this person is saying his name is Yahuwah. Okay? Y-H-A-U-H-A. Something like that, right? Yahuwah. And, of course, you know, people say Yah and, you know, uh, Yahweh, all these these particular names, right? Yahweh. And I'm saying to myself, listen, brothers, if you want to call that, go ahead and call that. But why are you, okay, if you do it in meekness, it's okay. We could sit down and I want to ask you, what are you saying? What, what, just ask and plan, what are you saying? And then show it to him. And then you, we, you, ask the Heavenly Father, right? The same way that they say that they have fasted, and if they've cried out to the Most High and lost sleep, so did I. For a higher. And not only that, brothers and sisters, I'm thankful to the Most High. We got to do it in the spirit, brothers and sisters. There's a lot of people that are coming to, you know, the knowledge of the truth, forever learning. And forever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Who's the truth? Christ. To model yourself after him. When you begin to walk like he walks and the Holy Spirit begins to indwell you and be poured upon you. See, the Holy Spirit was poured out on Yeshua without measure. To us, there's, there's measure. There's a measure of grace. There's a measure of faith. So, here it is, you know. I'm looking at this video and I'm feeling the thing. I'm like, man, I'm feeling a certain way about it. And the way that I'm feeling is like, you know, for myself, brother. I'm not going to argue with people. If you want to call, I'm perfectly fine with it because that's our people right now. The Most High is going to come in Isaiah 52. He said he's going to give us his name. All right? And we will all know from the least to the greatest. We'll all come to know the Most High. We'll no longer say, do you know the Most High? So we're waiting on that time. So until, so until then, in the meantime, in, in between time, serve the Most High with, with, with fear and trembling. That means reverence. Reverence him. Don't tear your brothers down. Don't be a stumbling block. But be the light. Alright? And if you know something that is true, that you believe in it, then proclaim it and stand on it. But walk like the blessed Messiah. Alright? With boldness and confidence. And let them alone. People are saying all that. We let them alone. So anyhow, I'm to the point where I'm confident. But I will sit down and I have sat down and I talk to people when it comes to those who the flock that the Most High has entrusted to me. Because why? Those of us who are teachers and are elders, we're going to give an account. And we're judged by a higher standard, right? Not to say that we know everything. And so the way to teach is you be the example. What are the fruits that people are seeing from you? What did the congregation see from you? Have they seen you go through the struggle? Have they seen you compromise? Have they seen you fold? Have they seen you be transparent? Have you inspired uh, the flock amongst you? Have you fed the flock amongst you? Have you taken hindsight and insight and 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 uh, taken charge over the, the congregation amongst you to care for them? All right? 
And there's things in myself that I ask the Father for. Help me to be more loving, to when I meet people, to, to feel warmth. And why am I saying all this? Because my brother was feeling heavy and, and you know, I said he you know, he had some questions. I said, Brother, that's that's I'm always here for you, brother. Always. All right. And at the end of that, he's still standing on the most high higher. All praise be to Ahia in the name of Yeshia. But brother, it's out there. Brothers and sisters, it's out there. People are coming against everything, and it's just, how do you know what's right? See, the devil meant it that way to confuse. There's no confusion in my mind. And at times, because we are man, mankind, all right, and we are flesh, well, sometimes we'll begin to question and reason, well, why is all these things happening? Like, a strange thing happened, but we need the word to confirm everything that we're going through. So when we look back on it and reflect, right? So, long story short. Man, this is supposed to be a short story. It's always happened that way. <sighs> My brother is still standing on, on the word of the Most High. And he says to me, I just don't know why people aren't calling on. And I'm paraphrasing. I, you know, I don't want to put words in my brother's mouth in case, you know, and he watches and sees this. But why aren't people calling on the true holy name? How could they, how could they say it's this and that it's that, right? And, uh... How could, why aren't they saying is how could they say it's this and, and that? But, you know, that's the things that are going to happen. All right? People are going to say that. Hold on one second, brothers and sisters. I'm tuning right back in. So as I was saying, you know, the attacks are going to come. And, uh, you know, some people will fall by the wayside. But for those who truly have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and those who truly earnestly seek the face of the Most High and are pressing in to enter into the courts of the Most High with praise and thanksgiving, you brothers and sisters just keep enduring and keep going. So, you know, speaking to my brother DJ Holy Ghost, and I look at the message he sent me, you know, about this thing about, you know, with Ahia. So I asked my brother, or I told my brother, I said, maybe what I said, my man said a lot right here. I told my brother where I was where I was at, right? I I'm just gonna paraphrase here. I said, you know, people are going to do that, they're going to come at you and they're gonna say these type of things and they're gonna say things about the most high. And not everyone's gonna agree with this. That's first and foremost. And we have to be okay with that. We but we must continue to, to be steadfast. We must every man, uh, straight up, must be fully persuaded. And so I'm going to put this on the record here, if this is to be said. You know, you keep hearing people say, oh, the only reason why people are calling on Ahia is because they're following Elder Ricard, right? Man, isn't that something? I mean, that in itself, whoa, I mean, how great of a reward must be awaiting for the brother, Elder Ricard, you know, the elder in Israel. That's what I'm going to say, because, listen, across the border, there, there are elders in Israel. I have no problem if the Most High has lifted someone up and they fit the characteristics of what it says to be an elder, like in Titus and, and Timothy, then, you know what? The elders are worthy of double honor, all right? So, anyhow... It just it blows my mind, like you know, it just makes us think about, or makes me think about the, the time when the prophets were living. They said, "Well, who was this? If it was Elijah or Elisha, he's coming to cause all this trouble amongst Israel, all right? Whether it was Josiah, or it would have been Yeshua at that time, right? Or Isaiah, okay? Uh, who is this coming to cause all this trouble for Israel?" So this is every time the same thing, you know, that they, they do amongst the prophets. These are the characteristics that those who really do the work and they don't, you know, respond back by attacking. And you know what? The most high will plead our case. So if you know that you're doing a good work, you don't have to say nothing. You don't have to accuse anyone. Don't be an accuser. All right? Just speak the word and, you know, the Holy Spirit will reveal it. So anyhow... Uh, my brother, and so like I said, I did want to put that out. I'm calling on the higher because when I read Exodus 3, 
and 13 to 15, it says, tell him that I am have sent me, have sent you, and that's his name. So, you know, people can explain away and, and you know, I'll, I'll make an effort. Most high will not pray and the Father will bless me to bring forth um, the way that I understand it for our congregation. And not only that, but to do my part, to stand on the front line with my brothers and sisters and sit in the hot seat, you understand, you know, for, for, for the greater good. So that all that would come to the Most High would come to the Most High, and that they would be bold as well, and say, you know, we're going to stand up in truth, and you know, we're going to defend the truth and fight to the death for the truth, and the Most High will fight for us. Amen. And so be it. So anyhow, my brother says the hundred and forty-four thousand. Right? Let me read this here. My brother says. My brother tells me, right, if we already know, I'm looking for one here, okay, here we go, He's, my brother says, I mean, I agree all the way, but I guess I have a few questions here. One, if people are not using the right name like a high, then I guess they're lost, right? So if they're not using the most high's name, or are they just, are they just lost? People do. And people are getting tossed to and fro. But, and the way that I answered it, I said, you know what? One thing, they could be just lost. If they're not reading what it says right there, and they're letting someone explain it away, then that's the way that you look at it. This person is lost. Now that, or, if they have the fruits of the Spirit, and the, the growth and the humility, then just seek in the face of the Most High. It's either one or the other. If they if they truly have the fruits of the Spirit, then the, you know, I've talked to brothers who may have called on, I really have, uh, Yahweh or Yahuwah, and these brothers have, I guess whether they have a mature spirit or a meek spirit, and I praise the Father for it, and, um, you know, when, when I see that those other names go back to Satan, I want nothing to do with them, <laughs> that's, that's just plain and simple. And so, you know, for each his own, and maybe when they can, I pray for all, all of Israel. I really do. Because the next thing my brother says then is this. I just jumped in. I'm sorry. So, the, so that, that was my response, right? The next thing my brother says is this, right? So if we already know that there's the elect and the 144,000 that are predestined, then what is the point of trying to win the loss even if you have, even even if you and I die tomorrow? So in other words, we're trying to win the loss, right? And this is this is really good. Bless you, brother Jesus, Holy Ghost. And so I understand. I sense frustration in in my brothers. You know, in his spirit, from his from his words, and 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 we went we went back and forth and text each other, in this conversation. So he says, if we die tomorrow, right? So he says, uh, um, the hundred and forty four thousand are still going to be the first saved. Most high willing, it will be me and you as well. So the hundred and forty four thousand we know and, and bless you brother is is the elect of the most high. This is the government being set up, those elect, the hundred and forty four thousand that are gonna go out and boldly preach the gospel. And not, not only that, they'll be sealed, having the Father's name in their forehead, right? The hundred and forty four thousand. So, you know, whether the 144,000 is from the very beginning that will be a part of that elect all the way up and to now to our day. One thing that we, that Yeshua told us and why we must do it, and I know Brother DJ Holy Ghost knows this, Matthew 28, and I believe it's 18 and 20 says this. Let me read it for you, brothers and sisters. Matthew, the great, the great commission, right? To go out. So this is, this is our mission right here. Yep, 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. 
And Yeshua came and spake unto them. When I say Yeshua, I'm speaking of the one whom the world calls Jesus Christ. All right. And Yeshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19. Go ye therefore. So go there and teach all nations. All right. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Right? And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now we know that we're in the end of the world because the end of the world is the field. Right? And so the angels are coming and the reapers are coming to separate the wheat from the tear. So brothers and sisters, you know, we must be like the five wise versions and keep that fire, you know, keep our oil, keep that anointing, the unction of the Holy Spirit, and don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, she'll leave you, right? So I understand what my brother was saying, and I feel his pain because I feel the same way. Often, as a matter of fact, I was feeling really heavy, and then he gave it to me. I sat there, turned everything off in, in the lab, and I just went to my book, and I went running to our Heavenly Father and just read his word, and boy, did he, remember, Boston in the Hyatt. That's what this is about. So let me boast in the Hyatt now, okay? And I read in the book of Enoch. I'm going to share that with you here. I sent out yesterday to our brothers, you know, in close proximity that we stay in contact with. I send the word out every day. I count the days as they're going from the very beginning, from the first all the way down to the uh, 364th. And we are now on the uh, 332nd day. At sundown, it started the 333rd day. And so just a few more, you know, another month or so until the end of this so-called, uh, so uh, the end of the year, the, according to the Hebrew, all right, and based on the Enoch calendar. And I follow that, right? So let me go ahead and um, finish telling you what, what my brother said in our conversation. My brother says, so what's the point of preaching the gospel? Man, well, that's the point because Yeshua told us, and the point is, is that, so many people deny it, brothers and sisters. It just goes in one ear and right out the other. And so I told my brother, brother, just be renewed in the mind, you know, and be strengthened in your inner man because I feel the same way. And, you know, I'm going through, I'm fighting multiple battles on different fronts all at the same time. But the one thing in it, how I'm overcoming because the Most High Higher is with me, working with me. He's, he goes with me and before me. All right? In Yeshua's name. So it says... Well, he says, I think the main reason I pushed the gospel is because he says that he is not willing that one person should perish. I'm on. So it's not the Most High's will that any should perish. But when we're going to look in the book of Enoch, we're going to come to find out that people chose to do that themselves. Right? So I said, I feel you. I, I've been feeling really heavy, fighting multiple battles, it seems like, on every front. And I'm still grieving. And he says, uh, I'm still grieving. It was that I've been able to talk to, I said, I've been able to talk to hundreds, if not thousands, if I've not reached thousands. And it seems like not many are willing to continue to stand for truth. That's what I told my brother, right? When it puts them at odds with those nearest and dearest to them. The Holy Prophets felt, the, felt that way, the way that me and you feel, Brother DJ Holy Ghost, and the way me and you feel brothers and sisters how you feel the same way you go and you talk to your your family you talk to neighbors and i mean the world comes at you when you this is how you know when you begin like i thought for myself like man my goodness i've been proclaiming this truth i've re reached out to brothers and said brothers come on you want to go out and uh reach people and maybe it just wasn't convenient you know or whatever the case is i don't know what their reasoning was but they weren't able to do it so I thank the Most High for those who are standing next to me, who follows and keep the Most High highest commandments. And I just, I thank the Most High so much for them, you know, for Ak Aaron, and for Ak Terrain, you know, and uh, in specific, you know, I thank them for them because they've been consistent. And, uh, you know, sometimes we have to give up what's convenient for us. And, you know, straight up, brothers and sisters, I mean, you get to that point, but that's that's your decision. I'm not saying I'd never say anything that I say to force anything upon you because listen, it's your sacrifice. But 
I do say what I say as to admonish the people, to exhort them, and to warn them. And not only that, but to give them future hope and to know that there's a restoration that we need to look beyond this temporal world and to know that the Most High has something greater than what you see around here and that you should aspire to be so. But again, you know, that's on your own, it's on your time and on uh, the Most High time and your time and what you do with that time because you're going to give an answer to Him. I don't give anyone time, right? I'm not the Most High. So anyhow, it says, that's why I sent out Micah 7 today, okay? And straight up, I mean, I know people, okay, and, and, and seen this. They've called on the high. I've seen people do it. We've seen people in the truth. They called on the higher, the great I am, that I am. And then now they call on other names. And so, I mean, but that's they're working out their salvation with fear and trembling. So how do I discern someone like that? I've seen people do things that, that I myself wouldn't have done. We're in the truth, we're in the truth, and they go out and do it. And I'm not trying to air out what other people do because I'm focused on my own self, but I am my brother's keeper, and I want to be there for my brothers. But listen, we need to be obedient to those pastors that the Father would send us. Like it says in Jeremiah 3 and 15, the Most High shall give us pastors. After his heart, not after their, their own, not after man. So forget what man is saying. Let those who really are going through it, who are laboring to bring this truth, consistently, effectively, fervently, pounding the pavement, putting themselves out there in the hot seat. Okay? Now, they're not comfortable out here. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and all praise be to the Most High. The Most High, excuse me there. The Most High won't allow us to sit there and be comfortable. So we must spend our time, just like I told the brothers out when I was out prophesying in the street with, 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 with Ock Aaron and, and Terrain. Listen, and, and maybe you guys didn't get that on camera, but I talked to a lot of the brothers. And all the brothers that we've seen, I said, brother, I called brothers and linked out, and maybe they're watching. I don't know if they'll come across and see this, but I know that people's tension span is just like that. One to three seconds, and they're gone. They don't have the time. But for those who are linked in, in the spirit, they will spend the time and be encouraged because they recognize that people of like faith and they're yearning to be together and to be gathered together. The same way that in my spirit that I'm yearning. But first we must prove and try one another and watch and see is this person really authentic. Because I'm getting ready to go to Micah 7 and tell you what it's about. Not everyone, not all Israel is Israel. And the true Israel, Yeshia, was an Israelite. Okay? So, but there were other Israelites that were wicked. Okay? So, look what it says in Micah. Let me read the background of this, okay? Let me read the background of this book here. Because it's raw what it says. It really is. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. This is, this is matter of fact, this is going to be the weekly exhortation slash bolstering in and on the high end. All right? Watch this. Now, Micah, the book of Micah. Micah's name means who's like a higher. All right. Found at the beginning of the book. And abbreviation of Micah. All right. Jeremiah 26 and 18. And the question Micah asked at the end, who is a power like unto thee? Or who's a God unlike unto the most high, a higher? Micah 7 and 18 is that. It sums up the book's overall message. People should ponder the person, the person, the acts, and character of the incorporable most high of the whole earth. So in other words, you should see his action and his deeds, how the almighty, how he responded, how he judges, how he pours out his wrath, how he's been merciful and gracious. Right? Okay? So people, they really should... Okay, ponder, that means to think about, think upon, think about, meditate on, okay, and uh, the person, the act and character of the incomparable, he cannot be compared, incomparable to anything, no matter how much money you had, no much, how much joy, you. there's no joy better than the joy that the Most High will give you in knowing the Most High and being known of Him, entering into His courts, all right? 
There's no one that you think that you can get angry and you think that you can pour out your wrath and you, you take vengeance into your own hands. How much more should the Most High? You think, you look around and you see the Most High's creation, which is beautiful, absolutely, and that the enemy tried to corrupt and has corrupted and defiled. How much greater is he who made it? So much more beautiful, right? You think you and I can love? Wait till we get on that level, that level that you and I, the true believers, inspire to do and, and inspire to be like. That's who you're going to become. Not this momentarily thing. We're thinking beyond the temporal around us. We're thinking beyond. We're looking past that. All right? Look what it says. It says, all people, not some, all people, every single person, as I mentioned earlier in this exhortation, every person belongs to the Most High. Now, he has those of his persons who are vessels that were created for honor and those who were for wrath. But ultimately, he's the creator of all things. He's the source of life, right? And just as he has created, he has given us the power to create and to speak things into existence. And to, everything that we see was spoken into existence by the one who is incomparable, the most high of hosts, Ahia, Ashar, Ahia, right? I am that I am, as it says in Exodus 3, 13 and 15. Tell them that I am have sent you. Alright? So listen to this. All people answer to the sovereign power for their worship and the kind of lives they lead. So worship, the praise, the way you live your, your life. Worship means to adorn. Right? So what are you adorning? Are you adorning your luxurious lifestyle? Are you adoring just your momentary time in the world and being a friend of the world? Right? The abominable things of the Most High. The things that man esteem is an abomination to the Most High. Right? Look what else it says. The rebellious and sinful will meet his judgment. Say it again. The rebellious and sinful will meet his judgment. So Brother DJ Holy Ghost and to all of my brothers and sisters that are out there laboring on the forefront those doing music, which is ministry too, and praising and encouraging our brothers and sisters, I want to commend and esteem you, and I pray the Most High blesses you with every tool and resource necessary that you may be effective. I pray that He grants you more grace, okay, for your shortcomings when you fall. But I pray that if and when you fall, that you get back up and that you praise the Most High like never before. Come back with tenfold zeal, a hundredfold zeal, and cleave to the Most High. All right. And uh, I pray that he gives you the endurance. And I pray that you, as well as myself, I pray for a hedge of protection over your families. I pray. I pray for health. I pray for the most high's favor upon your life, because true happiness is the most high's favor and blessings upon your life. So may the most high bless and keep you all. All right. In the name of Yeshua. OK. Now, but those who earnestly watch and wait for him will find his listening ear. So what it sounds like to me, Brother DJ Holy Ghost, is that you're watching and waiting and it saddens you, right? It, it saddens and it, and it hurts, right? Because you talk to people, you do music, you, you, even some of you, you know, those who are in the truth and those who are supposed to be God-fearing, you reach out to them and it's just all the separation People, and what I've noticed, not everyone's willing to go there, but we have to let each person, we have to be, let them grow. And, 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 and be hopeful because we ourselves were there at one point. But that does not mean to give anyone, uh, you know, let them sit there and, and be, uh, how you call it, lackadaisy. You are to cry aloud and spare not by bringing the word. When you cry aloud, man, you are to reason with the people. To let them know that, why are you serving this wicked system? Don't you know that the Most High loves you? You're going to forsake the kingdom for this momentarily happy happiness, what you call happiness? Let me go to uh, Micah 7. All right. And it talks about Micah 7. It says, look, 7 and 1. Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as the graplings, right, as the grape gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first 
the first ripe fruit. Verse 2, the good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie and wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. So all trying to get what his brother had. They covet him, right? Okay, that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh, right? So now the chief asketh, and the judge asketh for a reward. So those who are supposed to be, be judging righteously, and judging after the Most High, or asking for a reward, okay? And we understand that a gift blinds the eyes of a person. That's why that one song, I don't work for a prize, I work for the Most High. Gifts blind the eyes of the righteous. I'm here to proclaim the truth and uncover the lies. That religion, that religion try to teach to my tribesmen. Now go to work, come on. That's what we do, we go into work right now, right? And I think about that, brothers and sisters. You know, I, I said that I'm not... Actively see, uh, actively having finances come in or whatever the case is. But I understand the real ministries, they don't get the big support. And it's not to downplay because the Most High may touch and if he sees fit, he will. And that's why I've always said this too, even when we had the building that I just mentioned to you earlier in this. Uh, I mentioned that, you know, I was able to sit 30 something odd people. And, you know, when we packed it, we had like over 60 people for my son's and him and his wife's uh, wedding. I mean, this nose hair, <laughs> I'm sorry, this nose hair is itching me. Um, that was totally out of place. But nonetheless, what we see is that I myself recognize it at times. But then that doesn't mean that we don't desire to have more people be with us. But the Most High knows the hearts of people he as that scripture says that he tries the heart and judges the reins of man. I'm paraphrasing. It's in Jeremiah, I think, 17, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere in there, how the Most High tries the heart. But I don't have time to go there because there's other scriptures I want to bring out. Let me get back to Micah. So, it's not about the quantity or the masses, right? Because remember, if I can show you that picture, two-thirds of Israel will be cut off. And one-third will be one third he'll bring to the fire. And so we, you and I, and those of like mind and like faith, must pray that we are, are worthy to escape the perils of this world and stand before the Son of Man so that Yeshua can put upon us a crown of life and give us, you know, the robe of righteousness. Right? So, it's not about quantity and the masses and how many numbers and this and that. But it's all about quality. So I'm more concerned with, I'd rather have, and this is just a figure of speech, 10 people, okay? 10 people who really fear and love the Most High. That are obedient to the Most High. Than to have a hundred. I'd rather have a hundred than a thousand, a thousand than a million. Because with all of those numbers, it begins to be grievous to you. Just like when you're overseeing a huge flock, and the scripture says we are the little flock, as far as this congregation go. On a big flock, you have all these people, and people are here, and they're there, and disobedient, and rebellious, and they don't want to listen, and they don't want to follow the Most High. And that's grievous, man. I mean, the, most, the Bible says, and I believe it, the blessed scripture says, the Most High will never give us more than we can handle. So I, this is my effort in making the point to feed the flock that is amongst me. But it's up to them to go and feed off of it. It's up to you to go and feed off of it. I can't force anyone to look at Just as if I spent hours and, I, and I've done, and I still do faithfully, watch Elder, uh, the GOCC. Um, I, I listen, you know, listen to Pastor uh, Dow, some things that he says. I listen to Pastor Charles Lawson. Um, there's some other pastors that that are that I listen to too. That I mean, I follow their message, but more importantly, because I see the faith, the spirit there, not just so much a man. Because I don't follow the only man that I follow and that that we all should follow is the Son of Man. So when I look at that man or man. I must see the Son of Man, and I must see Christ in that person. See? And then we can be gathered together on one accord. Alright? And so, 
with all the men that I said I can't that I've just mentioned I can't say that I agree with everything for a hundred percent with them because I don't because then I wouldn't be a, a person of my own but I would for the most part of what I've seen because I wouldn't listen I wouldn't be going back and, and checking with with them okay and there's some things that maybe they have said or that I've heard here and there that may have grieved my any of us that has the Holy Spirit we can tell we hear something we're like oh Holy Spirit tell you right there we pray for the brothers you know we pray for the elders all right and also the, the other elder I can't even think of this elder name I, I think he was IUIC this I know it's uh, Bishop Nathaniel I don't know his last name and the other one the other elder I can't think of his name right off the top but he seems to be very very humble and again like with the, I can't say that I agree with everyone this you know I'm seeing like everyone else said but I'm not out there I'm not here to nitpick and start start you know the soul discord I'm here to just be an example and be a be a light the most high allows me to gather with the brothers who are doing the work and begin to build then this is not man's thing none of it all right and the most high appointed me to this post and uh, you know those in the spirit they recognize that and you know I have this testimony as you all have the testimony all right so let's get back to Micah so Micah says there's none you know he's looking around the good man is perished out of the earth there's none upright among men so ultimately Micah's looking around and he's feeling like um, me and brother DJ Holy Ghost and how you feel like you know what even those who are in the truth <laughs> there's none there's none righteous and so like I said earlier man will always do with man so if anyone is trusting a man per se and following a man now we do honor and esteem those who are faithful for the work's sake but understand we all have to understand that man is going to have shortcomings and we have to lift our brothers up but our faith in, is not following the man that man fears the most high and he, just like the most high told Saul he said look it you know the children of Israel asked for a king it was a great sin I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you over them but you better you better tell my people my laws and you better follow what, what I say so that's the warning to all of us we better follow what the most high is saying to do alright and don't let the enemy enemy taint you because you know one is grown and None of that. We must humble it down. And that's one thing that I've seen uh, with Elder Ricard. And again, like I said, you know, my prayers go out to the uh, to the elder yeah, and for the elder and, and the elders that are doing the work across the four corners of the earth. All right. This is I'm talking about the elect and then not just that in the churches too. those who truly fear the most. High. I wanted to say this. There are people who are persecuted and killed. Because they believe in the character of Christ, who we know is the the the, the Hebrew Savior, the Israelite, Yeshua, but they may call him as Jesus, and yet they are killed and persecuted because of this, and they'll hold the faith. And and so, some of us here, and you know, in Babylon, boy, you just go out there, and you know, a couple of minutes they turn the heat on in the oven. And people are flipping and flopping and doing all kinds of things. So that we need to take heed to that and, and, and recognize that. We're going through some troublesome time. And it's, the heat is getting turned up, brothers and sisters. It's time to be to be all. Or, or, or get turned to nothing. When I say nothing, that means the reward of paradise. An everlasting joy and bliss. You're not going to have that to look forward to. You're going to have the judgment of the Most High if you lost your nerve, if you lost your way. So, just keep that in mind. All right? It says, The best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. And the day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh, now shall be their perplexity. See? So even the, the best of them you gotta, you gotta watch them. It's, they're, they're this was in Micah's time. The Bible said there's nothing new under the sun. So here it goes again. The Bible tells us that in the last days the love of many shall wax cold. So it'll be the best when they got all this understanding. And most high willing, some people really do be in the spirit, but 
warring against these demons and they cast out demons and that demon walks in dry places and, and wants nothing more than to come back to its original host. And he comes back and sees the house been cleaned up. He brings ten more or several more worse than, 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 than him. And that person is several to ten times worse than the time when the demon was cast out. I hope you brothers and sisters are hearing this. This is what truth is about. Okay? It, 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 it encompasses it all. Truth. We lovers of truth. That's what we are. We love truth, right? Now look what 5 says. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. So in other words, it's like you know, who lies in your bosom? That's it's speaking of your spouse. The significant other, everyone's treacherous. <laughs> That's what Michael was saying. Now I'm going to go into the commentary. And I know that in our Bibles, I don't necessarily follow. you got to be very careful when you're looking at these commentaries because sometimes they put their scholars up and, and their scholars, they write certain things that just totally, it, it sways you, your understanding to more leaning to what they understand. And you need to read the word of the Most High so you can understand it and then read the commentary and pray in the spirit, right? So here we go. It says, as Michael society uh, disintegrated, he responded with tears. So he cried. Same way that you and I do, Brother DJ Holy Ghost. Like a field already harvested, Micah found no fruit left in his ministry. So he's ministering out, showing people, but where's the, where's the benefits of it? He's ministering to it, but no one wants to listen. No one, will, <laughs> no one will keep hold of it. It's almost like if I showed you a picture of this. You imagine, and I, I spoke on the, those dead congregations, right? But let's, let's get a picture of that. It's nothing there, brothers and sisters, right? Because the picture says a thousand words, right? So just so you can see what I'm saying. Ministry is service. So he served the people, told them the truth, told the people the sins, so forth and so on, right? And look what it says. Michael found no fruit left in his ministry. No good people were left in the land. And the moral fabric of society was decayed. That sounds like today. He saw bloodshed. Yes. Even when I was watching the news last night, you know, and seeing people across the, the world and lost their lives. And I, I cried that we live in a world now, brothers and sisters, where continually people are being killed. Innocent blood is being shed. People are being murdered. All right. Idolatry, adultery, fornication. Don't forget all these things are going on. And no one has the time to really sit and meditate and cry out to the Heavenly Father. Okay? And say, Father, look how it has become. This is, I'm living in all of this and my life, you know, my life is threatened. As you go outside your door, someone try to mow you down, rob you. You, you get what I'm, what I'm getting at? This is the world that we live in right now. So you must really know those around you and pray that the Most High brings the right people and that he weeds the snakes out of the grass. All right? If you're not going to be faithful to the Most High, High man, my goodness, what could we say? The righteous is an abomination to the unrighteous and vice versa. And the moral fabric of society was decayed. He saw bloodshed, evil, bribes, see, and wicked plots. People would wake up to think about how to come up and do evil and then practice it. Homes and family relationships had disintegrated to the point that no man could trust a friend or even his wife. Just like I said. Children dishonored and rebelled against their parents, making family members their enemies. Isn't that something? Think about the children in this day and age. They go to school. If they're not able to do what they want to do, they're mad at the parents, especially if a parent is a god parent or a parent that's trying to do right and saying, look, you're not going to go out and do what the world tells you to do. I'm your parent. In this world, a parent can even chast, you know, chast, chasten their child to keep their children from doing bad things. You know, the, the kids talking about they're going to put the parents in jail and call the police on them. You, you, you get what I'm getting at? Now, here's the message and the purpose of the book of Micah. Micah sought to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. He pronounced a highest judgment to call his people to repentance. So listen, the same way that Micah did, this is what we're telling. Brothers and sisters, if you have sin in your life and you are practicing sin right now, if you are, if you are habitually, that means continuously, 
sinning against the Most High. You need to lay, especially if it's something that you know, and if it's something that you don't know, ask the Father to, 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 to make you aware of it, and then you need to lay it down. You need to confess it, all right? And you need to turn from it, all right? So, and justice was rampant. And when you read the book of Micah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, verses 9 through 11, and chapter 6, verses 10 through 11. Sin was rampant. Thus, they would suffer destruction and exile. Alright? That means silence from the Most High. You've been exiled. You were a peculiar people. The Most High put you up above all the people of the earth. That's what the Bible says. Don't believe me. You just go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I believe 6 if, I, if I'm correct. You need to hear this. You need to know who you are and then why these things are happening to you. We need to know. You are to be the light, the soul of the earth. Right? Seven and six. For thou art holy people unto the Most High thy power. The Most High thy power uh, hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. That's it. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Most High did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest. But because the Most High loved you, he loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn to your fathers, had the Most High brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Crystal clear. All right. But Micah balanced his prophecy with hope of a remnant spirit through the Most High's judgment and glorious future restoration. So there's the encouragement for brothers like myself. DJ Holy Ghost, brothers like, like yourself, those who are watching and sisters who are viewing this for the righteous, we're at a time where the Most High is chastening the whole world. But through it, through the captivity and going through the fiery furnace of affliction, the hope is that the Most High will save us to give us paradise. But we first must go through great troubles. As it says in the book of, uh, I believe it's Acts, uh, Brother Joshua sent that scripture to me. I hadn't read that one in, in a minute when he sent the scripture to me through the email. And it says, uh, through much tribulation, we must continue to enter the kingdom by uh, going through much tribulation. I'm going to pull it up here in one second, brothers and sisters. Romans Acts, right after Romans. Oh, before Romans. Then. Acts 14. All right, then I'm going to the book of Enoch. Get ready for it. You're in for a wonderful treat. 14 and 22 says this. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Ahia. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Most High on whom they believed. And that's order. And so I see, you know, the uh, the brothers, Brother Elder Ricard in the GLCC going out doing the work. And so our prayers, we need to pray for our brothers and the brothers like them, okay, that have the doctrine correct. I I'm on point with it, all right? Brothers and sisters, I mean, I'm going to take this, let me see, if I, do I want to hold it like this and read it? Maybe I will. Yeah. Okay. Now follow me here. I'm in the book of Enoch. This is what they would call Second Enoch or the Book of the Secrets, right? And I'm going to start from 61. 61, chapter 61, all the way to 65. All the way to 67. All right? So there's a lot here to go in. I'm just going to read it. It says, And now, my children, 61 and 1, keep your hearts from every injustice, right, which the Most High hates, just as a man asks for his own soul. Let me flip the page.
Just as a man asks for his own soul from a higher, so let him do to every living soul. Because I know all things, how in great time that is to come are many mansions prepared for men, good for the good and bad for the bad, without number many. Blessed are those who enter into the good houses, for in the bad houses there is no peace nor return from them. All right. Four. It says, Hear, my children, small and great. When man puts a good thought in his heart, brings gifts from his labors before the Most High's face, and his hands made them not, then the Most High will turn away his face from the labor of his hand. Right? And he, meaning man, cannot find the labor of his hand. Five. And it says, And if his hands made it, but his heart murmur, and his heart ceased not making murmur, ins uh, how do you put insistently, yeah, incessantly, has n he has not any advantage. Go up here. Of how it is fitting to bring one's gift with faith, because there is no repentance after death. Did you hear that? This is getting heavy, brothers and sisters. I have to pause for one second. <laughs> okay, 62 and 1. Blessed is the man who in his patience in his patient patience brings his gift with faith before the most high's face because he will find forgiveness of sins. Two. But if he take back his word before the time, there is no repentance for him. And if the time pass and he do not of his own will what is promised or what he has said, there is no repentance after death. Verse 3, because every work which man does before the time is all deceit before men and sin before the Most High. See that? Continue to read on. It says, Of how not to despise the poor, but share with them equally, lest thou be murmured against before the Most High. When man clothes the naked and fills the hungry, he will find reward from the Most High. But if his heart murmur, he commits a double evil, ruin of himself and of that which he gives. And for him, there will be no finding of a reward on account of that. As I mentioned that, there will be nothing, right? When you back out doing what the Most High says and serving the Most High, there's nothing for you. There's no reward for you. You only look forward to his judgment. Three. And if his own heart is filled with food, and his own flesh clothed with his clothing, he commits contempt, and will forfeit all his endurance of poverty, and will not find reward of his good deeds. And that's very clear. See that? So, brothers and sisters, you cannot for you don't want to be the one to forfeit everything that you've endured to just get something in this world. And be a friend of the world and sit in as if you're equal now. See, now now you've made it, right? And I always kept that in mind. I remember that. Like, you know, when I had my business, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm just not going to exalt me. But I'll humble myself. All right? Hold on one second, brothers and sisters. All right, so as I was reading in 63 and verse 3, And if his own heart is filled with food, and his own flesh clothed with his clothing, he commits contempt, and will forfeit all his endurance of poverty, and will not find reward of his good deeds. So we must endure, brothers and sisters, every proud and uh, magnic... How do you pronounce this? Magniloquent. Magniloquent man is hateful to the Most High, and every false speech clothed in untruth, it will be cut with the blade of the sword of death and thrown into the fire and shall burn for all time. 
you have any questions for how long all time is, for all time. All right, let's continue on. For all time, I'm going to 64 now. It says, that's where, that's where the most high called of Enoch. Let me jump down to 65. Enoch's instruction. Hold on one second. All right. So we see here, we're on chapter 65, um, the book of the secrets of Enoch, right? Let's read 65 and 1. Here, my children, before that all creatures were created, the most high created the visible and invisible things, too. And as much times as there was went past, understand that after all that he created man in the likeness of his own form and put into him eyes to see and ears to hear and heart to reflect. All right. That's the mind and intellect wherewith to deliberate. So that means that you could actually analyze what it is that you're seeing. Okay, and reason, all right, and ponder on, and think upon. Three, and the Most High saw all man's work and created all his creatures and divided time from time. He fixed the years and from the years he appointed the months. All right, so he divided time from time. He fixed the years and from the years he appointed the months. And from the months he appointed the days, and of days he appointed seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's what the days are. There are no such thing as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right, and we know that they instituted that. And that's you know the pagans did that. All right, if you will. And I believe what they call and named him after the uh, the so-called so-called gods, if you will. All right. And in those he appointed the hours, measured them out exactly, that man might reflect on time and count years, months, and hours, their alternation, beginning and end, and that he might count his own life. From the beginning until death. So you can look back on your life. And reflect on his sin. And write his work. Bad and good. Because no work is hidden. Before the most high. That every man. Might know his works. And never transgress. All his commandments. And keep my handwriting. From generation to generation. When all creation. Visible. And invisible, that means spiritual and physical, as the Most High created it, shall end, then every man goes. All right, read on. Every man goes. I'm going to the next page. And then goes where? To the great judgment. And then all time shall perish. No more time. See that? In the years. And thenceforth there will be neither months nor days nor hours. They will be stuck together and will not be counted. There will be one eon. And all the righteous who shall escape the Most High's great judgment shall be collected in the great eon. For the righteous, the great eon will begin. That's the new age. And they will live eternally. And then too, there will be amongst them neither labor. There's no more laboring, working for your job. Nor sickness, no disease, nor humiliation. No one will mock or uh, reproach you, right? Or revile you. Nor anxiety. There'll be no more concern or fear for your life and you can't pay your bills. I don't know how you're going to pay, have a house, a roof over your head, what you're going to eat. Nor need, nor violence, like I mentioned, no more murdering and killing, shed, shed of innocent blood, n no more war, nor night, right? 
nor darkness, but great light. Don't you want that, brothers and sisters? Think about it. And they shall have a great indestructible wall and a paradise, bright and incorruptible. For all corruptible things shall pass away, and there will be eternal life. Now, we're reading on. Enoch instructs his sons and all the elders of the people how they are to walk with terror. That means fear reverence and trembling before the Most High and serve Him alone and not bow down to idols but to the Most High who created heaven and earth and every creature and to His image. Right? That's, that's right. So you don't bow down to no one but the Most High. And now, my children, keep your souls from all injustice or unrighteousness, sin, iniquity, evil, such as the Most High hates. Two, it says, walk before his face with fear and trembling or terror and trembling and serve him alone. Bow down to the true power, not to dumb idols. All right. So bow down to the most high, the image of him, which Christ is the image of the invisible power and bring all just offerings before the most high's face. The Most High hates what is unjust. So if you know something that's unjust, remember, I didn't say it. Enoch the righteous scribe said it. The Most High hates what is unjust. Who is Enoch? The seventh from Adam. Alright? As is written in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11. For the Most High sees. Hold on a second, brothers and sisters. Hey, hold on, a wifey calling me a second. Bear me one second. Okay, back to where we were. For the Most High sees all things. When man takes thought in his heart, then he counsels the intellects. Okay, right? we did it again. For the Most High see all, sees all things. Right, right here. All right. When man takes thought in his heart, then he counsels the intellects, and every thought is always before the Most High. Makes you think of Hebrews four and twelve. The word of the Most High is sharper than any double-edged sword. Right? Who made? Who made firm the earth and put all creatures on it? Right? If you look to heaven, if you look to heaven, the Most High is there. If you take thought, I'm getting a glare right there, a, blur, a glare. If you take thought of the seas deep, of the seas deep, and all the under, and all the under earth, the Most High is there. For the Most High created all things. His essence, He's all compassing. All right, it's everything. He's all in all. All right, his presence is there. You cannot escape the Most High. All right. Verse five. For the Most High created all things. Bow not down to things made by man, leaving the Most High of all creation. Because no work can remain hidden before the the Most High's face. Verse 6, walk my children in long suffering and meekness, honesty and okay, and provocation and grief and faith and get this right. And in truth, in reliance on promises, in illness, in abuse. In wounds, and temptations, in nakedness, all right, in privation, loving one another, till you go out from this age of ills. 
And that's what's in this age, in this world, ills. Right? That you become inheritors of the endless time. So in other words, all these things that we just had read, walk my children in long suffering and meekness honest and honesty. Even in provocation, people try to tempt you and grieve through the pain. We must walk in faith and in truth and reliance on the promises that he's given us, even if illnesses and abuse and wounds and temptations and nakedness and privation. If someone tries to deprive you of something, loving one another till you go out from this age of ill. So we must continue to keep our hearts full of love. We must keep our hearts sensitive to the word of the Most High and for his people. All right. One cannot say that they love the Most High if you can't even love your own brother. Blessed are the just who shall escape the great judgment, for they shall shine forth more than the sun sevenfold. For in this world, the seventh part is taken off from all light, darkness, food, enjoyment, sorrow, paradise, torture, fire, frost, and other things he put all down in writing that you might read and understand. This is what Enoch did. All right. Go on to 67. It says, The Most High let out darkness on earth and covered the people in Enoch, and he was taken up on high, and light came again in the heaven. What are they talking about? They're talking about Enoch, the righteous scribe, like it says in Hebrews Hebrews 11 and, and 5. Right? Right here. Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because the Most High translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony. What is testimony? Evidence that he pleased the Most High. So, you have to have the evidence. What is the evidence? If you're going through persecution, you know, and you're doing what the Most High says to do, that's the, that's the testimony. All right? And it says here, uh, so what the Most High let out darkness on the earth and covered the people in Enoch, and he was taken up on high, and light came in the heaven. When Enoch talked to the people, the Most High sent out darkness on the earth, and there was darkness, and it covered those men standing and talking with Enoch, and they took Enoch up on the highest heaven. All right, so the angels took him up where the Most High is, and he received him and placed him before his face. And the darkness went off from the earth, and light came again. And the people saw and understood not how Enoch had been taken, and glorified the Most High, and found a role in which was traced the invisible power, and all went to their homes. All right. Got some highlighted parts here. This is an exceptional privilege, as paradise is the third heaven, is, it says, seven, the future habitation of the righteous, is the seventh heaven. So, a couple highlighted parts here, but there was something else that I may have had, maybe not. Okay. Now, look what happened here. This is what we must fight. We must all overcome it, overcome this. On the fall of Adam, certain consequences follow. First of all, physical death. Right? Adam's sin brought in physical death. Otherwise, man would have been immortal. This conditional immortality of man appears also in First Enoch. All right? And wisdom. Right? It goes on and says, Adam is said to have brought in only premature death, physical, and physical declension. 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 All right. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Let say that. Declension. 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 Uh, declension. This consequence appears in many passages, but mostly in and gives the reference right there. 
where trouble and anguish, disease and death, sensual passion, and the beginning of children are traced to it. For when he transgressed, untimely death, deaths came into being. Grief was named, and anguish prepared, and pain was created, and trouble consummated, and disease began to be established, and Sheol kept demanding that it should be renewed in blood, and the begetting of children was brought about, and the passions of parents produced, and greatness of humanity was humiliated, and goodness languished, right? Spiritual evil. And that man became a danger to himself. So man's danger to himself. Left to himself is dangerous. And to the angels. In the former passage. The text states shortly. That man became a danger to his own soul. This fact. Therefore. That man henceforth became his own worst enemy. Implies. That by the fall. A hereditary. Right? Something that you just, uh, let me say this. A gene. Something that you, that you carry, that you inherit. Right? A hereditary tendency to evil was established in man. Did you hear that? This is why you must be born again. It's hereditary. Every single man on the face of this earth has an hereditary. And hereditary tendency to evil, to sin against the Most High. Even the most innocent little baby grows up, sin against the Most High. In one passage, only in one passage only does spiritual death appear to be uh, to be traced to Adam, but even. But even there, it does not follow as an inevitable consequence, right? Spiritually, you can repent and your soul can live with the Most High. Notwithstanding the above penalties that followed on the fall, man, according to Second Baruch, right? That's where this is coming from, preserves his free will. His mortal nature remains unimpaired. And the spiritual consequences of Adam's fall are in the man limited to Adam himself. For though Adam first sinned and brought untimely death upon all, yet of those who were born from him, each, that's you and I, each one of them has prepared for his own soul torment to come. Did you hear that? And again, each one of them has chosen for himself glories to come. So it's like what you're working on. You know, what you're doing, what you got going on. Adam is therefore not the cause, except only for his own soul, or save, for, save only his own soul. But each of us has been the Adam of his own soul. Right? Thus, man remained the captain of his own soul and therefore of his destiny. The issue of right and wrong are placed before him and the power of choice remains in his keeping. See? It's up to you, brothers and sisters. Everything's about choices. Behold, I have placed before you life and death. And he called heaven and earth to witness against them, but after his death, they sinned and transgressed, though they, though they knew they had the law, reproving that's correcting them, and the light in which nothing could err or err. Also the the spares which testify in me. All right, the lamp of the eternal law shone on all those. Who sat in darkness. Alright. Even from the Gentiles. The needful knowledge was not withheld. And their conscience. Their conscience. Testified to their guilt. To their. Involvement of sin. Only. Their pride withheld from them. 
a knowledge of the law. See? So it says, Hence, the choice of evil on man's part is deliberate. So they're deliberately sinning against the Most High. It's like, well, I got something more to do or whatever you got going on. You may not come out and be honest with yourself and say that, but your actions show it. You may not say that or think it, but what is your opinion? The Most High, the Almighty, the Everlasting Father has told us the way to love Him. This is what people have an issue with. For then they choose not for themselves this time, which beyond the reach of anguish, all right, could not pass away. But they chose for themselves that time, whose issues are full of lamentations and evil. So that's what you, you if you're having fun in paradise now and you striving to build up everything for this kingdom, then you're in your kingdom now. So that they should not come to honor of which I told thee before. Thus, in Second Baruch, there is no doctrine of inherited guilt or or of total depravity. Uh, this differs from the Pauline doctrine, all right, and the latter, owing to the fall, the to the fall of man is henceforth dominated by original sin, which makes his fulfillment of the law and therefore his realization of righteousness impossible right he is not indeed thereby robbed wholly of free will but retains it in a degree just sufficient to justify his condemnation wow did you hear that so in other words because man fell man doesn't he's impaired and he's blind he's seeing from a carnal part but if man would be reborn again then man has an opportunity to have an eternal eternal life in paradise and escape the great judgment, the great wrath that is to come upon the children of disobedience. So, you know, I pray that you all have been encouraged. Again, this is boasting in the Most High. Now we see, Brother DJ Holy Ghost, why, you know, people seem to choose to turn away from, turn away from this, uh, this walk. You know, they can't bear it. I mean, it's three or four type of believers, like it says in the, the sower of the seeds in Matthew chapter 13, I believe. Okay, some that hear the word with the readiness of the heart and, or let's go like this. There's some that hear it and because it falls on dry ground, the birds come eat it up. Some that fall on, on ground doesn't have deep root. The sun heats it up. Some fall on 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 good soil and uh, because the cares of the world chokes it out of them all right and they go back to doing what they're doing some people uh, <clears throat> some have uh, some hear it with faith and they believe and because they believe they they keep the most highest commandments you know I want to just testify to you brothers and sisters here for a second today I mentioned to you earlier in here that I had to go to court and I did right and all praise be to the most high that as I'm sitting here I'm in this courtroom right I'm looking around and I'm saying to myself I don't recall saying this part to you all already so if I say it again if I had said it earlier it would just count as a double blessing so I say to myself, uh, I'm sitting in this courtroom, right? And I'm like, man, the most high, and, and I mentioned to you last night the heaviness that I felt and talked to my brother, DJ Holy Ghost, and asked him and just told him just, you know, personal stuff that where I am, just, brother, I need you. Will you, will you lift me up and stand in the gap? For me and with me and touching agreement. And he was feeling heavy. And the brother said always of course. And you know. It really touched my heart. And I just as I communed with the most high. I just thought about. How the most high told Jacob. You know our forefather. When he was on the other side of the Jordan. He said that he was going to bring him back. To the land. Of, of Israel. Of Canaan. And that he would bring him back over the river. And he would protect him and he would provide for him 
and that he would be his power and that Jacob and his sons would be the most high sons and his daughter and their daughters would be his daughters his sons and daughters and the most high provided for them and I thought of all the things that you know like I said Abraham being in the fire Meshach Daniel and Bendigo uh, if I pronounce that right them being thrown in the fire I thought about Eleazar the elder who endured I thought about the mother and her five children who endured and so these are the things I think I think about Yeshia and that what he did for for me and you and um, you know it was hard for him and but yet he did it and so that that gives me encouragement and it, it helps me to make great strides when I feel discouraged that time and I feel down and I need to begin to sing hymns and, and songs to myself and you know I need to be stimulated and rejuvenated all right um, those are the things that I think upon and I think that you know I think for myself that the most high is nothing too hard for him. I believe it. It must never be said with the most high. Some things are possible and others he can't. He can do all things. There's nothing too hard for the most high. And that he makes a way. And so I just think to myself that, you know, the things that I'm going through as a believer, as someone who's fervently and effectually and intimately in a relationship with our Heavenly Father, with with Yeshia. All right. I'm being tried and purged and purified. They meant it for evil. And, of course, people can be treacherous. And that's what I think, too. People can be so treacherous. We all can. And so when I think of people being so treacherous, it makes me look at my own self. And maybe I'm hard sometimes or hard on people. And it makes me consider my own ways. Because the way that you judge is the way that you will be judged. And so I just pray that um, I'm able to convey mercy and be gracious towards people. Be firm for the Most High. Teach my sons and my daughters to, and my family and my brothers and sisters in Christ to just continue to cleave to the Most High and be very charitable and uh, be a doer of the word, of the things that we speak. Make sure that we do what we say and say what we mean. And uh, keep all corrupt things away from me. Rid us of pride rid us of itchy ears, rid us of haughty eyes, and, uh, you know, guide and order our steps, Heavenly Father. So I just think about that. So to testify to you, like, you know, I was heavy in the spirit last night, talking to my brother, reflecting everything that I've just talked to you about this hour or so, and knowing I had to get up and go to court in the morning, and I'm sitting here in this courtroom now, and let's just fast forward to about 9.30 this morning, 9 o'clock this morning sitting here and these people are getting called up and this what they would call traffic court or minor or minor court but again this was because of the business that I had I lost the business and there were certain things or procedures and precautions taken to that would ensure if I wasn't able to meet and pay those things because I just got so overwhelmed in debt then the reassurance the backup would cover those people who I didn't wasn't able to transfer their registration so instead like I said I get the tickets and stuff and I'm saying to myself, man, my goodness, I go down and talk to these these people in the state and say, you know, I don't understand how someone is trying to provide for their family and loses their business. And I know it's nothing but the enemy, for the most part, not to give him too much credit, because although the world meant it for evil, the Most High used that time for a great thing, put me out, and to really rely and trust on them even more than I have. And I think that's what I what I get from this all. And here I, I sit before you all, brothers and sisters, in, in great need. And, and with the great need, I know that my Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, is going to provide. And uh, again, I pray that the Most High would send forth His perfect laborers, like as He has done. He sent uh, Aaron, and we, as, as I mentioned, you don't see a, a bunch of quanti a quantity of people, of a whole bunch of people with us, because one who has a lot of friends and so many people, they stretch themselves thin. But this quality people who... And just watching my brother, and having known him in the world before I even came to the truth, and how we were neighbors, and things like that, and how we used to, you know, I guess party, if you will, together in the world, 
and and uh, you know not to put the brother's business or my business out there, but you know doing certain things that the world would do, and you know with the 420 and and things like that, and having left that alone to knowing and seeing his life and seeing the things that he's going through and hearing the testimony of him and seeing his fervency and and watching his growth, my prayers and my heart goes out to him and his family. And I thank the Most High Ahia that, because I prayed for someone like him, a man that could stand on his own and go out, and not only that, but iron sharpen iron, someone that would truly labor. And he has been thus, and so I just wanted to esteem the brother for that. And I'm thankful to the Most High for you. All right? And just be faithful, faithful with his finances, faithful with his consistency to learn his humility. I set, there's times that we sit back and we go out and I, I just kind of watch and I, I see my brother, uh, Ak Aaron, just going in and I'm like, wow, the spirit is humility and may the Most High bless you, brother. I mean, really, a doer of the word and we are to esteem those. You're not to withheld. If, 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 if power in your hand to do good, and, you know, a kind word, you know, I know I don't have all the things that, if, if there's more that I could, I would do so much for you, brother. And uh, just just know that I'm in the spirit warring for you and I walk with you and stand in agreement with you according to the Most High's will and purpose. And keep trusting in the Most High. He'll never let us be put to shame. And uh, as we learn how to be obedient servants and, you know, keep our house in order. And continue to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. You know, it's just a blessing. And I know I kind of went off to the side right there. But I'll just be speaking in the spirit a lot of times, brothers and sisters. So I'm just testifying to you. So here it is. I'm sitting in this courtroom, right? I'm looking around. And there's a little bit of anxiety I'm, uh, and pressure. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm getting ready to go up in front of the judge. And they're going to, you know, I'm thinking. Because they could have. They could have given me two misdemeanors for these, these things. And then that's something that would be a criminal thing. So now they're putting, not only do I owe money. But that I don't have the money to pay, but then they're going to charge me more money to make the payments that I don't have. And like I said, right now, again, your brothers, I guess, if you will, I'm just I'm working for the most high. And uh, I'm praying the father, as he always has done and will do, open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on his son. And so that I'll be self-sufficient. He's done it over and over so that I'm not relying upon no man, no matter who the man may be. No one can say that they did it and think in their fleshly minds that they help. Um, when I say not to say that they didn't help because they, we should help, but that because what they did, they've done it. If someone gives, they should give willingly and obedient, obediently with joy because the Most High loves a cheerful giver. Amma, that's what the Blessed Scripture says. And so I'm a cheerful giver and I look back when I reflect, I think of, I, I, even last night I was thinking of all the times that I've given, all the things that I've given to be faithful, alright? And I say, wow, what a blessing. I've talked and I've told people about that. We have a lesson about tithing on the Holy Roman Ministry website. You can go there, it's the whole breakdown of it. Okay, every single precepts, everything. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. So, long story short, I'm sitting here in this courtroom, and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself now, and I'm feeling like, ooh, wait, I'm hearing all these people get called up, and they're like, you can do one of three things. You can say, not guilty, uh, guilty, or no contest. And no contest is that saying guilty. And then you get a fine, you go into the, the, the next room, and then you sign up to make, or make a payment, traffic school, whatever the case is, or whatever you're in there for, and then thinking to myself, this is not what I need right now. Just an, another thing. Okay, now mind you, I told you where all this uh, come from. Um, the dealings of the business, right? And uh, so here it is. I'm sitting here. If I had the paper, I looked in my coat pocket here and I can't seem to... Maybe this is it. Give me one second. Let me see this is it. I'll show you, brothers and sisters. Man. I'm thinking to myself, oh, they're getting ready to call me. So now I'm like, I need to be calm. And you know what? Don't let anything, I don't fear what man can do to me. Not to say that, you know, anxiety won't try to attack you and worry won't try to creep up. But you need to speak to it in the name of Yeshia. So I ask the Father, give me your peace. So I start thinking about the five parts of the law. And while I'm thinking, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm kind of nervous here because they're getting ready to call me. And I just, I feel myself. I don't like feeling like that. 
So I began to think it. It didn't just come to me right away, but I knew the first part was like the royal, the moral. So you have the moral or the royal, and then you have the ceremonial, and then you have the dietary, and then you have the sacrificial, and then you have the judgment. And I'm looking at the judge, and I'm looking at the, the bailiff, and I'm looking at all the people in there. And you know what? I said, I'm going to judge angels. I'm going to judge the people. And the the most I'm the most highs. I'm the righteous of the most high in Christ. And I just it's just some this peace came upon me. Then next thing you know, I was called up, brothers and sisters, boasting in the high right now. The judge calls me. I'm like, oh my goodness, here it goes. I'm like, yes, sir. And uh he says, and this is it, blew my mind, brothers and sisters. Just be, right before I had all that thinking, they called me right up. Tell me the most high is not good. And I mentioned to you that you know, prior to last night, I was in the studio a little bit early and then talking to my brother DJ Holy Ghost. And then I shut everything down because it was real heavy and just thinking and reflecting on everything in this walk. And uh, the judge says he had a sense of humor and, you know, he was what, what appeared to be or what we would call, uh, you know, a narcissist. It was a brother or an Israelite, right, judge. And nonetheless, he was a judge, right, in this system. And I'm thinking this system, in this worldly system, in this government, and it made me think of the scriptures and uh, about how the, the, the world's judges, if someone makes a complaint long enough, and it says it's in the scripture, that judge is going to avenge that person and, and serve justice, right? So here it is, I'm thinking like, you know, my Heavenly Father is the judge. He's going to avenge me. He's going to plead my cause. He knows everything that I need before I even ask him. And I took it to him. And brothers and sisters, I went up to them before I could say anything. The judge told me, he says, you know what? You don't have to plead anything. You can tell them, you know what? Say it like a man to me. Tell me that I'm not guilty. They, the, the DA has dismissed, dismissed uh, both, uh, both cases. Of the tickets that they given me. And I said to myself, brothers and sisters, so much. I said to myself, praise, praise the Father. Praise you, Most High. Thank you, Ohio. That's what I said. And I walked in. I began to walk out and I said, oh, well, thank you. And so now I'm thinking that I got to pay $25. Okay, two $25 uh, tickets, right? To dismiss it. And I'm like, at this time, man, pockets are on kind of low right now. Even, even that's hurting right now to do. And so, you know, I'm like, I get ready to go walk through there to make a, make the payment. And the, the judge said, no, you're not even walking through there. Walk out the same door that you came in. And I turned around and I tell you, my blessed, beloved brothers and sisters, beloved of the Most High. It's just something was lifted up, a spirit of gratitude. I'm so grateful and thankful. And I just wanted to testify to you all about it to show you that Ahia is so good okay our Heavenly Father is great beyond measures he's able to do everything and he'll meet every need in Christ Yeshua and so you know I text my wife and told her and I mean man she's seen it and so it makes me even more hopeful I called my eldest son and began to talk to him and said you know and put some things out in the air for him and just I'm encouraged brothers and sisters and you know, I, I pray that, you know, this message finds you in the highest perfect peace. And uh, I should have said first and foremost, I, I, maybe I did say it. If not, uh, Father, please forgive me. But all praise, honor, and glory be unto the Most High. Ahaya, Bahashem Yeshaya, Wawar Wakadash. And that's all praise to the Heavenly Father, the I Am, and the name of Bahashem. That's Bahashem means in the name of name of Yeshaya, that's Christ, or whom the world calls Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, Wawawak Kodash, or Wawak Kodash Wawak, all right, the Holy Spirit. So with that, brothers and sisters, um, please continue to pray for me, that the Most High will be, be done, pray for endurance, pray for godly wisdom for your brother, Pray for spiritual strength as well as physical strength. And for the hedge of protection and the provision and favor of the Most High's hand upon 
my life and all of his servants' lives and that uh, more people would be brought to the light and more people would choose Christ today. All right, bless you all. I want to say Salah and armor up. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18, because the world, the war, excuse me, is not carnal against flesh and bones, but it's against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And we must pull down every stronghold in the name of Yeshua. So I superimpose the most high sovereign word which governs every area of our lives in the universe, in the earth, under the earth, in the visible as well as the invisible. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. It cannot and will not, but it must cease and desist immediately at the name of Yeshua. Be blessed. And let me say it again. Salah and Amorah. Shalom. Love you, Israel.